Hello. Please hit like button and subscribe my channel. Also press bell icon for future video notifications. Thanks. The avian flu, or bird flu, is a disease caused by type of influenza viruses carried by the winged animals, according to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. According to the U.S. Department of Labor Occupational Safety and Health Administration, Avian influenza viruses have been recorded in more than 100 wild bird species and pose a health risk to domesticated birds. UK Chief Veterinary Officer Christine Middlemiss UK Animal and Plant Health Agency Avian flu can sometimes kill wild birds too. In late December, for example, BBC News reported the deaths from flu of thousands of wild cranes at the Hula Nature Reserve in Israel and the subsequent culling of tens of thousands of turkeys and more than half a million chickens by local farmers in an effort to contain the outbreak. The UK is now experiencing its largest ever outbreak of avian influenza, BBC News reported last month, with more than 60 cases since the first report of infected swans in October. To prevent further spread of disease, all sites with infections must kill their birds, resulting in hundreds of thousands of birds culled already this flu season, the Associated Press reports. Despite the name of the disease, H5N1 can also infect other animals, including pigs, cats, and dogs. Hydrogen nitride has also infected humans, especially those in close contact with diseased birds for a long period of time. However, the agency also notes that human infection with H5N1 is rare and human-to-human -human transmission of the virus is limited. The scientist. What does a typical avian flu season look like? Christine Middlemiss. I would caution against when we say, typical, avian flu season because what we find is, every season is different and indeed, every, confirmed case, is a bit different. But generally, over the last 15 years or so, what we've seen with bird flu as we, the UK, get infection coming back in migrating wild birds, as do our European neighbors. The birds go to the north of Russia for the summer, and they mix with birds. And they all exchange the viruses and then head back to Europe in the winter and can then potentially directly infect our poultry, our kept birds, or can infect our wild birds. What generally we've been seeing is, every two to three years, a higher level of virus in the migratory wild birds. And we know that's there because we test them. We have a surveillance program that gives us an early warning of what's happening. That then translates into infection in kept poultry, whether it's backyard poultry, animal sanctuaries, and sometimes commercial farms. Dot dot dot. Last winter season, we had 26 infected premises in the UK, which was our biggest one ever. This year to date, we're at 77. Back in 2003, the Netherlands had over 200 confirmed cases. So it does fluctuate. But in general, this year, we are seeing the highest number of confirmations we've ever had. Italy is at nearly 300 confirmations. Hungary is getting towards 100. It's doubled very recently, the numbers in France and the Netherlands. So what we're seeing across Western Europe really, is, an increase, in, the number of cases, all being from this subtype H5N1. T.S. Are there any ideas about why this year is different? C.M. There's lots of theories, but there's no concrete evidence yet. And it is something we will be looking at. Is it something to do with immunity within the wild birds? Is it something to do with the way they're mixing? And what's driving that? People have suggested it could be climate change, flight pathways. We don't know. So, lots of possibilities and it absolutely is something we will need to internationally look at further. T.S. What does infection look like in birds? Respiratory signs or neurological signs. They can have twisted necks. They can have discolored combs, and kind of runny eyes and so on, and maybe diarrhea, and then often rapid death. Dot dot dot, and that gives us a heads up. The owner, they report to us that they suspect they have a notifiable avian disease outbreak happening in the premises and we can investigate.
TS. Do infections have any impacts on wild populations? CM. It does kill some species of wild birds depending on their infection level. We in the UK asked people to report in found dead wild birds and then we triage them. And some of them we will sample looking to check what has killed them. Is it avian flu? What subtype is it? What species are they? Are they a migratory species? Are they one of our own national wild birds? That helps us understand a bit more about where the infection is across the UK, and then the risk to our poultry. We started off in the autumn, and we could see infection in Eastern Europe raising our risk level of incursion. We went through medium to high and now we're at a very high level of risk of incursion of infected wild birds into the UK. When we got to that level, we put in an avian influenza prevention zone requiring certain biosecurity actions of all bird keepers. Dot, dot, dot. That means that there is a very high infection pressure out there. That risk level stress is across the whole of Great Britain. We've had infected wild birds detected in the north of the Isle of Skye in Scotland down to the south coast of England. T.S. What are some economic effects of the outbreaks? C.M. For individual keepers and companies, they're very serious. For people who keep backyard flocks. The same applies for commercial companies keeping birds. We do call out all the birds on confirmed infected premises and go through a process of cleansing and disinfection. Please support my channel to grow by pressing subscribe button and the bell icon. We will notify you technological news. Thank you.